Normally on this channel, we're right here in this very control room. Occasionally, we've gotten to go and do a few road trips to places like Mike's Music up in Cincinnati. And today, we're going to start a brand new series where we also get to get out of this control room a little bit. One of my freelance gigs is that I am the front of house audio engineer at the Creek Church in London, Kentucky. It's a large church, it's a multi-campus, and what we're going to do is start a new series today where David and I are going to take a song that was recently recorded by me at the Creek during a night of worship, and we're going to break it down start to finish. We're gonna show you how the song was tracked. I'm gonna show you all the things that I would do to get it edited and ready to be able to be mixed. And David and I are gonna tag team this song, and we are going to get it mix ready and release ready, and we're gonna show you everything start to finish. If that sounds like something that you're into, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit the bell notification so that you know when every video in this series is coming out, and give us a like that really helps with the YouTube algorithm and helps us to reach more people. With that said, we are going to dive into this series right after the bumper. Okay, so we are going to kick off this series. This is sort of the introductory video where we are going to go through everything that the series is going to encompass. I'm really, really excited about this. I've wanted to do a series like this on the channel for a really, really long time, and it just never worked itself out. It never really became obvious that it was the time to do it until recently. The church that I freelance at as the front of house engineer on a weekly basis decided to have a big worship night, and we had really just gotten our live recording rig with Waves and Super Rack and an external computer kind of all dialed in just two weeks before, and I thought, this is the perfect opportunity. Not only are we running this rig and people are back in the room and we're having a night of worship because COVID and all that stuff is calming down, but we're also able to live track everything. And so I thought, let's just go ahead and let's do this series. And so I was telling David about it and he was like, yes, I'm totally on board with that because we both have a lot of experience and both of our sort of our history as coming up in the audio industry as producers and mixers is sort of founded in church as worship guitarists that kind of crossed over and became front of house engineers. And so David did that for a few years. And now, of course, he's mixing full time from his home studio, Soothsayer Audio. And uh, I'm here full time, but I still have a couple of contracts in the uh, the live sound world, and one of those is the Creek Church, and I just thought, this is something that I really want to do because 10 years ago, I can remember getting my first Pro Tools rig for the small little church that I went to and hooking it up to our Mackie 24 8-bus console and wanting to record live worship music and be able to take it home and mix it and kind of share it with, you know, the people in our band and our friends and even some of the other members of our church and being really disappointed because it just sucked. I had no idea what I was doing and, you know, this is like 2009, 2010, so 11, 12 years ago. YouTube was still a relatively new thing and there wasn't anybody that was really covering how to do this start to finish and uh, I know there's probably a lot of resources like this out there, but because I started Capsule to Cone, thinking that I wanted to sort of be a resource and another place online to sort of share what I was doing in the studio, but then also to be able to teach people some of the things that I wished that I had learned, I just felt like it made a lot of sense to go ahead and start this series. And so this series is gonna be all encompassing and I'm really, really excited to be able to show you First of all, the gear that I'm using at the Creek Church and to be able to show you how we captured this night of worship. The DLive is a fantastic console and we are very, very lucky to have it. I love that console and the rig that we have with everything on stage and also the computers that we have at front of house to be able to use Wave Super Rack and then to also be able to multi-track record. It's just a really, really slick setup. But 
We're not just gonna talk about the setup that I have. I'm gonna show you a couple of alternatives that if you're in a smaller church, you can still be able to multi-track and do things nearly identically to the way that I'm doing it, even if it is on a smaller scale. So that's the first thing. Second thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go through all of the instruments, how they are getting to the console, because on this particular night of worship, the recording that we did has no live guitar amps. We're using uh, a Kemper floorboard for one of the guitar players, and we're using an Axe FX3 for one of the other guitar players. The other guitar sounds are coming through Ableton. We're using an Ableton rig over Dante, and that's going into the console so that we have our different strings and loop and pad tracks. And so that's gonna be really cool, showing you how we get all that in there. The singer for this song is one of our worship leaders that's uh, on staff at the church, Sarah Bayless. She's just a monster. I think that it's gonna be really fun to just be able to go through all of the tracks. And I should have said this at the top of the video, but you can download all of these. So as we're going through this whole series, you'll be able to download these tracks and bring them into your own DAW and follow along with it. And that's one of the things that's gonna make this series really, really exciting for all of us is that we're not just gonna put out one like mixing video and like quickly go through, here's all of our plugins and you know, every instrument. No, I don't wanna do that. I wanna stretch it out and I wanna make it meaningful to try to help you get the most out of creating your own template and to show you like, you know, if we were using this plugin on the kick drum to get the sound, this is probably the move that I would make. But if you don't have that and you've got something that's more like a stock plugin, or maybe you've got the Slate Virtual Mix Rack or something like that, to be able to show you a couple of different options and show you really the concept behind what we're doing and not just the, these are the plugins I use on my kick track and these are the plugins that I use on my snare drum. That's, that's not going to help you to be able to think about what to do in your own situation. So we're gonna go through everything like that. We're gonna take our time with the mixing. We're also gonna go through some editing. I think that, um, you know, it's, kind of hard for a band of people that are practicing maybe one day a week together and then they're having their uh, they're having their you know morning worship service or whatever it is in your situation maybe it's an evening worship service to just knock it out of the park you know on that first try but these songs are a little bit repetitive and so there's a lot of clever ways that you can edit things to end up having a mostly perfect or a, a a reasonably good sounding recording without a ton of mistakes. And so I'm gonna show you how to go through and do that and how to even do some pitch correction and some tuning with Melodyne so that you know the vocals, which are sort of the most important part in worship music, so that they can be mistake free and so that we can end up coming out of this with, even though it's not a huge, huge production on the level of like a Bethel or an Elevation or a Passion, whatever, that you can end up taking these concepts at the end of this series and you can use it in your own church to be able to teach and train your volunteers or to be able to better yourself if you're sort of like a one-man show that's doing the recording and the mixing and maybe you're even doing the broadcast mix. We want you to be able to get the most out of this as possible. All right, and lastly, to close this video out, please leave us some comments below. Let us know what it is that you want to see out of this series because we want you to get the most possible out of it. Any questions that you have, anything that you're already thinking like, man, I really want to see this covered in a series about recording, editing, mixing, and mastering worship music, just leave that down below. Uh, that's gonna really help us out. And then finally, of course, please subscribe, please like, hit the uh, thumbs up button and hit the bell so you know when the next video is coming out. We are really excited to dive into this with you and uh, we will see you in the next video.